Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today we're going to use our rational minds and work on solving rational equations. We'll need to make sure we know what a rational equation is. We'll review cross products because that's a way to solve a rational equation. We'll learn to identify extraneous solutions and we'll use lowest common denominators to help us solve rational equations. Well, I see a couple of fractions here. I see a couple of ratios. And that's because this is a rational equation. Now, how do we solve rational equations? Well, there's two ways that we're going to discuss for solving rational equations. And the first you've used before. When we were dealing with proportions, we used cross products to solve these proportions. And we can use it with any rational equation. You remember cross products. We take the numerator from one side of the equation and multiply it times the denominator of the other side. And then we take the denominator of the first side and multiply it times the numerator of the second side. And we set those two products equal. In this case, we have x plus 2 times 3x equals 2x minus 1 times 4x. Now, if we just do the math and simplify this, we get x minus 2 equals 0, or x equals 2. So all we have to do is use cross products and then simplify the numbers, and we can solve a rational equation. And it's always a good idea to check our solutions. In this case, our solution was x equals 2. So if we substitute 2 for x in our original equation, it should all work out fine. It should equal. So check your solution. In this case, when we substitute 2 for x, we get 2 plus 2 over 4 times 2 equals 2 times 2 minus 1 over 3 times 2, which is 4 over 8 equals 3 over 6 which is one half equals one half, which is true. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Well, we're asked to solve for Z. And we just got through discussing cross products, so I think that's probably a pretty good way to try to solve this. Our cross products are 2z times z minus 1, and that's going to equal 3 times z plus 4. Let's carry out the math. and We get 2z squared minus 2z equals 3z plus 12. And we can simplify that and bring all our like terms on one side of the equation and get it to read 2z squared minus 5z minus 12 equals 0. Well, now we got to factor this polynomial 2z squared minus 5z minus 12. And you've learned to do this before, but I'm going to show you the way that I do them. This is kind of a whole bunch of shortcuts, but maybe it'll be helpful. First thing I do is factor the 2 and factor the 12. There's only one combination of numbers that when multiplied together equals 2, and that's 2 times 1. So there's only one factor that works for the 2. But there's three factors that works for the 12. Well, now I know what factors I have to use. And I'm going to start out by creating my brackets. I'm going to create two sets of brackets. 
And in the first, I'm going to put 2z. And in the second, I'm going to put 1z. Now, hopefully you see that the 2z is because the factor of one of the factors of 2z squared was 2. The other factor was 1, so I have 1z in the other bracket. But now I've got three sets of factors for the 12, which means I've got three potential um, uh, numbers that could go in the back of each of these brackets. To figure out what they are, I have to multiply the 2 times the first of them, the 1 times the second of them, and then add and subtract those and see if it equals 5. Let's start with the 2 and the 12. 2 times 12 is 24. 1 times 1 is 1. There's no combination of addition and subtraction between 24 and 1 that will equal 5. So let's try the other potential combination. I could have 2 times 1, which is 2, and 1 times 12, which is 12. Is there a combination of 2 and 12 that equals 5? No, there isn't. So I can get rid of 12 and 1. If I were to perform the same exercise with the 6 and 2, I'd find out that there were no combinations of 6 and 2 and 2 and 1 that add or subtract to equal 5. So I can get rid of 6 and 2. Has to be in 3 and 4, but we need to know which combination is going to work. If we go with 2 times 3, we have 6. 1 times 4 is 4. There's no combination of 6 and 4 that equals 5. So it's got to be 2 times 4, which is 8, and 1 times 3, which is 3. 8 minus 3 equals 5. So I know it's got to be 2 times that 4. In order to multiply this 2 times 4, the 4 has to be over here. So I'll put the 4 over there, and I'll put the 3 in the other set of brackets. Now I just got to figure out what the signs are between my terms in each of these brackets. And my 5 is negative 5. It's negative 5z. So I need my 2 times 4 to be negative, which means that the second bracket has to be z minus 4, and the first bracket has to be 2z plus 3. 2z plus 3 times z minus 4 equals 0. And that means that z has to equal either 4 or minus 1.5. But we want to make sure to check our solution. Why are we checking our solution? Well, one reason we're checking our solution is just to make sure we didn't make any silly math errors. But there's another reason we're going to check our solution. We want to find out if there are any extraneous solutions. What's an extraneous solution? Well, an extraneous solution is a solution that doesn't make any sense. I'll give you an example. Let's say this problem told us that we were trying to figure out the length of the side of a rectangle. Would minus one and a half be a potential answer for that? Would minus one and a half be a reasonable solution to the length of the side of a rectangle? No, minus number wouldn't make sense. It'd be an extraneous solution and we could eliminate it. There's another kind of extraneous solution, and that's when our solution makes the denominator of one of our ratios equal to zero. That would mean that we had a denominator of zero and an undefined uh, fraction. There was, there'd be no uh, uh, solution to that division problem, the rational equation would be undefined, and it wouldn't make any sense. That would be an extraneous solution. Well, let's check our answers. Let's check our solution. Let's put 4 in for z, and when we do that, we get 8 over 8 equals 3 over 3. 
And that's true. 1 equals 1. Now let's try minus 1 and a half. And we get minus 3 over 2 and a half equals 3 over minus 2 and a half. And those are equal. So our solutions work, and there are no extraneous solutions. Well, here's another rational equation that we're being asked to solve. And it doesn't look exactly like the last rational equation. It says 2 thirds x. You just need to remember we could rewrite this as 2x over 3. So it's a rational equation. Now we could solve it with cross products. We could move that 1 sixth to the right side of the equation, subtract it from 3 quarters, and then we'd have a fraction on the left side and a fraction on the right side of the equation. We could use cross products and solve. But I promised you I was going to teach you another way to solve rational equations. And I wasn't kidding. We're going to learn to solve rational equations by multiplying each term in the expression by the lowest common denominator. Let's see how that works. Let's rewrite this equation so we've got a little room to play. I've got 2x over 3 plus 1 over 6 equals 3 over 4. Now, what's my lowest common denominator? Well, we'll factor each of our denominators, and we'll see that I have two threes, two twos, and a single two. So, our lowest common denominator is 3 times 2 times 2. We'll multiply each of our numerators by 3 times 2 times 2, and we'll see that our denominators are going to disappear. Let's try it. I multiply 2x times 3 times 2 times 2. And then I multiply my other denominators times 3 times 2 times 2. In my first term, my denominator is 3. I now have a 3 in my numerator, so those will cancel out and leave 2x times 2 times 2. In my second term, a 3 and a 2 will cancel out. And in my third term, a 2 and a 2 will cancel out. And now I can rewrite this equation. 8x plus 2 equals 9. I'll subtract 2 from both sides of the equation, and I'll get 8x equals 7. And then I'll divide both sides by 8, and I'll get x equals 7 eighths. Now we'll want to check our solution, so we'll substitute 7 eighths for x in our original equation, 2 thirds times x plus 1 sixth equals 3 quarters. And when we do, it in fact does equal 3 quarters. Our solution works. This is a much more complicated equation, but we can solve it using lowest common denominator as well. Let's figure out what our lowest common denominator is. We'll, we'll factor each of our denominators. Our first term is 1 over b plus 3. And we can't factor b plus 3, so it'll just contribute a b plus 3. The 2 won't contribute anything because the denominator is 1. But the b squared plus 12b plus 27 will contribute a couple of factors because we can factor that. Now, the coefficient of the b squared is 1. So I know that in both of my brackets, I'm just going to have a single b. And I know that there's going to be a plus sign between my b and my uh, next number because both of the operations within the original expression are, pu are plus. I don't have a minus sign there, so I can't have a minus sign in either, either of my factors. So I'm going to start with b plus blank times b plus blank. The rest is easy to fill out. 27 factors to 9 times 3, and 9 plus 3 equals 12. So my factors are b plus 3 times b plus 9. Now, I'll multiply each of the terms in my original equation by the lowest common denominator, which is b plus 3 times b plus 9. My first term, 1 over b plus 3, is multiplied by the lowest common denominator. And then we add 2 
multiplied by the lowest common denominator. And that's going to equal b squared minus 3 over b squared plus b, 12b plus 27 times the LCD. Now we can eliminate um, our uh, denominators. The first term, the b plus 3 and the b plus 3 cancel out, and it leaves just b plus 9. The second term is 2 times b plus 3 times b plus 9. Well, b plus 3 times b plus 9 equals b squared plus 12b plus 27. So when we multiply that times 2, we get plus 2b squared plus 24b plus 54. And our third term, b squared minus 3 over b squared plus 12b plus 27, is multiplied by the factors of b squared plus 12b plus 27. So it's going to leave just b squared minus 3. We can simplify that equation. And then we can factor the uh, polynomial that we get. And we can see that our potential solutions are b equals minus 22 and b equals minus 3. Well, now we'll want to check our solutions. We're looking for extraneous solutions. And because there's no context to this question that would tell us that the answer has to be positive or has to be negative, what we're really looking for are solutions that create a denominator equal to zero in one of our ratios. What we're checking is to see if minus 22 or minus 3 will create a denominator in any of the terms that equals 0. Well, let's try minus 22. If I put minus 22 into this expression, I don't get 0. And if I put minus 22 into this expression, again, I don't get 0. So minus 22 will work. How about minus 3? If I put minus 3 into this expression, I got minus 3 plus 3. Well, that's 0. I got 1 over 0. That's undefined. Minus 3 has to be an extraneous solution, and we can eliminate it. Now you try this one. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my solution. Well, let's try to solve this using the lowest common denominator. And the lowest common denominator is pretty easy to figure out. I mean, we've got three denominators here, x plus 7, 1, and x plus 7. So x plus 7 is our lowest common denominator. And we'll multiply each of the terms times x plus 7. x over x plus 7 times x plus 7 minus 3 times x plus 7 equals minus 1 over x plus 7 times x plus 7. Let's cancel out a bunch of those x plus 7s. And what we're going to get is x minus 3x minus 21 equals minus 1. We'll combine like terms, and we'll come up with minus 2x equals 20. And then we'll divide both sides by minus 2. And we'll discover that x equals minus 10. And if we check the solution, we'll find out that it does work.